looking pretty good. Just kind of want to add to that last section, you know. You don't really see many frequency counters on those D858 PLL chips. Yeah, it was a little before frequency counters time, that's true, but even people that mod them, it's kind of rare. And I'll show you one of the reasons why. And that's true for almost all these when you modify them. These, these don't really have a, a way to show the user the IF shifts at, on the sideband and, and erase them. They actually show you the true IF frequencies. So for AM, yeah, that looks perfectly on, spot on, right? 27405. And um, here, we'll switch it over to... Um, upper sideband. See it went up 2.5 kilohertz because that's really what the first IF of this radio is doing before it gets to the mixer. So that's what we tapped into and that's the trick to these guys. And then the counter can remove that 7.8 offset and give you a, a the readout of what it is close to it. <laughs> right? Alright so you go to lower sideband there you go. Two five. It's because it's lower sideband. So the point here is, yeah, a good user can get used to that. You know you're on AM, you know you're on upper sideband, you know you're on lower sideband. But usually these AMers, you know, they they're lucky because AM is going to be this way for both AM and transmit, just like sideband. You see. If you sideband transmit, key it up. See, there's no shift, right? So, but on these D858 PLL chips, they use the upper sideband crystal for AMTX, and you'll see what's going on here. Yeah, when you key it up, it shifts it up 2.5, and then later on it cancels it out. It's, it's crazy crystals switching scheme they used back here because they're really using five crystals to do this all. So, what's the verdict? Is this the good way to do it? Or should we tie it into the end gate of this PLL chip? Yeah, you see that that, that chip is the awesome old chip. You know them right away. They're pretty huge. But see that capacitor down there, C126? Yeah, we can tap into that with like a uh, 10 or 20K ohm resistor. And uh, we're gonna read about one megahertz coming out of that end gate. And it will shift 10 KCs as you change channels. So you just use the offset off the counter and uh, you can make that work too. So we're gonna give that a try, okay? Maybe give me some feedback on this one because, yeah, we some people are fine living with the offsets because they want to see this slide so they know if they're on frequency or if they can, you know. But generally, if you tune them in and they hear you and you hear them, yeah, you both on frequency, right? So uh, the other way is, yeah, you wouldn't see that. You would just always see. 274050 no matter on AM sideband or receive and transmit what's better let me know all right guys you're getting it pretty much wrapped up have an update some of the changes I had to do as I go along as you can see this really has a hard time fitting in this window the window of this clock on, on this radio yeah it's it's a tight one so what I wound up doing here is actually taking a skinny popsicle stick and mounting it kind of made a rail out of it and then I was able to kind of use some adhesive and put it up on the rail and then go back and forth until it fit just right in the window once the window was 
attached because it's really that tight now I put these lines up here on the top so I knew where the window would be but you still have to fine-tune this guy it's just that tight so um, yeah that's that update on there let's go over uh, how this turned out this is you see that sometimes these counters don't turn on because I have to lower the voltage to keep that noise out of there so sometimes you have to actually click it twice you see that yeah, the capacitor has to charge right so yeah that's that's just the way it is to keep this thing from screaming all right so there we have 27405 on channel 40 and you saw in the last example as you switched from AM to sideband to receive to transmit the frequency counter was just all over the place because the crazy they got really crazy crystal scheme in here switching things back and forth so um, yeah I'll show you here now there's AM there's lower sideband and there's upper sideband you remember that AMTX big old swing 25 KC's what was that all right see there we're in transmit mode and there's no shift and this is a real frequency counter it is reading the PLL chip and you can see I've got some extra channels in here I hooked them up to the back switch there's channel 80 there so yeah, so it will see the actual channel you're on. You just don't have the clarifier in this mod. So if you really like having a clarifier show up on this six digit, well, mod one is a better way. Just tap in into test point one. But if you like the channel to be just constant, then use method number two, and that's tapping into the end gate okay so I, I think that's pretty good and uh, we'll go over how we tapped into the end gate there okay over here by the PLL chip you see that capacitor there yeah I actually soldered on a test point to that using um, about a 10k resistor reason I didn't go on the bottom side of the board is because it's all full of a tin can and so they cover that test point up and shield it so I wasn't able to grab the bottom side so that's the trick now let me show you the math on that because when you're using test point one you just have to remove the 7.8 megahertz IF offset you see that crystal 7.8 megahertz so when you're using test point one you just subtract 7.8 and you get up the 27405 but the end gate what it reads on channel 40 is 1.350 so you, you just subtract that from 27405 and now your offset on the frequency counter is 26.055 so I programmed that in here using the, the buttons on the back here I'll show you twenty six point oh five five with a negative and that L is your intensity how bright you want it okay so again the output of the end gate at channel 40 is 1.350 so that offset is 26.055 counter offset all right next up we'll talk about the extra channel mod